Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. I take a lot of photographs. It's what I do for a living as well as make videos. And one of the things I have to do is process pictures very, very quickly and people often ask me how I do that. I'm also often asked, what does Lightroom do? Well, Lightroom is actually what I use for processing those photographs. And it's part of the Adobe suite. It comes with Creative Cloud or the photography package, and you can buy it as part of Adobe Photoshop as well. And it's a really, really powerful bit of software. It's great for cataloging, so it's a good database. You import your files in there, and you can easily then refer back to them and find them. You can put in keywords to search for them later. It also does face detection, which is very handy. But I also use it a lot for processing the actual image. That's adjusting the exposure, the contrast, the color, cropping, and all that kind of thing. And there's a lot more I can do to it as well, including turn it into black and white, monochrome, and so on. So it's really, really useful. So it works as a database. It also works as an image processor as well. So a lot of what I do isn't done in Photoshop anymore. I do it in Lightroom. And what I'm going to do now, because it's freezing out here, and actually it's about to start raining, and in fact it has started raining, I don't know if you can see that. I was going to go and take some photographs, but I think what I'm going to do is go back to where it's nice and warm and show you how Lightroom actually works. Very quick intro to it, and I've got some other videos as well coming up to show you actually in more detail how it actually works. That's better. Somewhere warm and thankfully got out of the rain as well. So this is Lightroom and it works the same whether or not you're using Windows or a Mac. So I'm using a Mac here and I'm going to show it to you here. I have right here a picture selected. It's taken at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone and you can see it shows me the picture here. Down at the bottom, I'm in the library module at the moment, so I'll show you a bit more about that in a second. You'll see that I have pictures down at the bottom and I can just click on them and it takes me to them and it displays it and you can see it loading up. I can click on that and zoom in and I can click again to zoom out. When I imported this, you've got an option to put in keywords, which you can do later as well. And if I just scroll down here, you'll see it's actually got the keywords here, which I can then use to search later. So if I scroll right to the bottom here, I can go to Silverstone and you'll see it's ticked. It's actually filtering so I can untick that. But if I was to click on that arrow there, it would, whether it's in this folder or another one that's connected to this computer, it would find all of them. So it's really good for uh, just finding things as well. So Lightroom acts as a catalog so you can easily find photographs and process them. And it doesn't matter where your photos come from. It can be from your camera, it can be from a smartphone, iPhone, iPad, you name it, it all kind of works. And in fact, you can even put video in here as well. So it can act as a really, really good database. So what you'll see is down on the left-hand side here, I've got catalogs, I've got folders. These are the, the hard drives where I've got those. And you can see these are folders that I've created. And there's quite a few. And you can see I've also got different hard drives here. And I could select one of those and find pictures in there as well. But I'm here. I'm on the Silverstone one. And I can, once I've selected it, I can then look through them. I've got different views here. So I can go to the loop view, which allows me to see them like this, and I can then quickly go through. I can change the thumbnail size so I can see more of them, and you can see they're kind of loading as I go. You can do things like rate them as well, which you can do in camera as well. So this is one of the ways that I go through and quickly choose pictures. Um, and what I do is by pressing any of the numbers between zero and five allows me to rate them. So if I just press three, you'll see over here, it's made it three star. Press two, it's two star. Press zero, it basically gets rid of the rating. Double clicking on the picture allows me to see a bigger version of it, which is, can be more helpful. And again, I can press the rating. So if I press three, you'll see down here, it has now rated it, and I'm going to get rid of that. Good thing is, is then I can go and look for all the rated photographs. So down here in the bottom right hand corner, I can go and look at rated and it will filter to show me only those pictures that I've selected that I think are worthwhile having a look at. 
yeah, maybe. Maybe not the greatest one I've ever taken. But the great thing is, is that I can go and make changes to these. So if I'm looking at this, what I can do is go over here to where it says library. And you see at the top here, you've got your modules. You've got library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print, and web. They all do different things, obviously. Develop is where you would change the exposure and changes. And if I click on that, you'll see that the panels on the left-hand side and right-hand side change. So we're going to take a look at how to make some of those changes in a moment. If I click on the map, if there is any GPS information in here, it will show me where it, those photos were taken and how many. I can then click on that to filter those down. I can create a book which I can send off to be printed by clicking on here and it will give me templates and I can drag things in there to make it work. You can see it's loading, so it's taking a little bit of time to do that. And there you go. So I could create a book. You see it's actually, actually picked up some images from a graduation that I took photographs at. Over here, you've got a slideshow. So you can actually create a slideshow. You can actually turn it into a video as well. Print allows you to make posters and all sorts of things with different layouts. So that's quite useful. You could choose to have have many pictures across and down and so on. And you've got the web module as well for outputting to the web so you can create web pages there. But what I really wanted to show you is give you an overview of what this does. So if I go back to develop, which is where I do tend to spend a lot of time, I'm just going to scroll up on the uh, right hand side here. So I've got my develop modules. And you'll see that on the side here, I've actually got presets. So I can go for black and white. And you can see as I'm moving over, you can see a preview of it in the top left hand corner. Can you see that? And if I move over, it kind of gives me an idea of what I want. Now, as I said, when I make changes to these, it doesn't affect the original picture. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to right click and create a virtual copy. So what that does is it makes another copy without really creating a whole brand new picture, which would take up a lot of space on your hard drive. Now, if I make any changes to that, I can click on it and see what it looks like. OK, I might want to crop that. So we're going to take a look at that in a second. But you've got all these different tones, sepia and so on down the side here. And there's loads of them. You've got the bleach bypass, cross process. You know, you can have a lot of fun with it. So I can even add it, make it heavy grain there. I'm going to go back to that black and white. So that's how you can do, use the presets. That allows you to do things very quickly. On the right hand side here, this is where I can make changes to exposure and crop and all that kind of thing. So to crop it, I just click on this button here. And then what I do is I click and drag, and then I can move this picture around to fit inside the box. Press Enter, and that's done. I could fiddle around a bit more to make sure that I've got, you know, crop it nicely, get better composition, and so on. On the right hand side, I'm going to show you very quickly here on this black and white one, but I'm going to go back to the color one in a moment. You can see you've got the color temperature. That's the temperature that the camera thought of the light around it. But down here, you can change the exposure. So if something's a bit too bright or a bit too dark, you can fiddle around. You can change the contrast. You can be very clever and change things such as the highlights. So it's only adjusting the exposure there. Or if something's maybe a bit too much in the dark, look what happens when I pull up the shadows over here. You can now see what's going on inside the middle of those wheels. So if I bring that down, you've lost the detail. You can pull it up. So if someone's wearing something dark, you can sometimes bring it up a little bit. The whites does something similar. I find the highlights is a bit more subtle. And the same for the blacks as well. But you can see you've got a lot that you can do there. I can't change the vibrance because I'm in black and white. Let's just go over here to the color version. Let's do that crop again. So if I do that, the great thing is, watch this. If I go back, I can just move it back to where it was before. Well, maybe not all the way. Let's go all the way. Done. Bang. You never lose it. You can come back any time. So let's just crop that down. OK, press Enter. You'll see I can now adjust the exposure, maybe the contrast a little bit. And you see the highlights, maybe it's a bit bright there. Bring that down and bring the shadows up and you get a little bit more detail. 
but you've got these nice options here. The clarity is the sharpness, but the vibrance is really cool because what you can do is you can make the colors far more vibrant. And you can do the same with saturation. Look at that, look at what it's done to the picture. Maybe it's actually not that great. But anyway, nice ways that you can adjust things. You can do all sorts of things. If I scroll further down, there are sharpening, noise reduction, lens corrections. The thing is, is that I have videos that I'm creating to cover those, but I just want to give you an idea. So something that I use is the highlight priority. And that basically, watch what happens when I slide it over, it sort of adds this vignetting in. And sometimes you want just a little bit of it just to focus on the image. I can see the before and after because at the top here, I can just turn on and off the effects. And it, it sort of focuses the eye and you could actually just add a little bit and you can always go back and change that. So that's another nice feature on Lightroom as well. I can easily export all of these. I can just right click and choose export and I can turn it into JPEGs or other formats as well. So one of the things I wanted to tell you that where they got very clever here and let's see if I can find a picture. There's someone, one of the commentators from Sky. Now let me just crop in because what I wanted to show you was about this vibrance and what's really, really good about it. Watch what happens with the saturation. When I do that, look at the skin tones. It's changing the skin tones of all the people in there. Okay, so let me double click that resets it and watch what happens with the vibrance. It doesn't really change the skin tone. Well, when I drag it all the way across, it's having some effect. But look at that, it's doing that without really affecting the skin tone. You don't ever really want to mess around with skin tones too much. So it allows you to do that. So this is a really neat sort of package for doing all these things. I'm going to take the uh, rating off. I'm going to take the filters off because I want to find a photo like this one. Wow, look at that. The exposure is like way off. Okay, I was taking lots of pictures and whatever, but what happens if I drop down the exposure a bit? Hey, that's really recovering the picture there. There's Jensen Button. I could just crop that in a bit because maybe all we want is him in there. Let's do that. And again, if I was to play with the vibrance, look what happens. I want to do a bit more to that. Let me create a virtual copy, right click. Let's see what that would look like in black and white. Hmm, maybe not great. Okay, what about antique? So there you go, that's Lightroom. And that is some of the things that you can do with it in terms of doing your cataloging. And also this is how you can also go and make adjustments to it. And you never lose the original data. That's a really important thing with this. So whatever it is, you'll always be able to come back and find your photos. I always say, Make sure you've got duplicates of your photo. So I've put all of mine on a hard drive, but I do have another hard drive that has stored uh, duplicates of all of this. Photographs are important. You don't want to lose them. But by using Lightroom, you can export them. And if you've got a mobile phone such as an Android or an iPhone or an iPad or some other Android tablet, you also have got Lightroom Mobile. So if you're using the Creative Cloud or you've got the photography package, so you've got an online account, you can synchronize it with that account so it appears on those devices and you can make changes on those devices which are then reflected over here. By the way, the other useful thing here is I can actually see what my exposure and everything is up in the top uh, right hand corner. So I can see the ISO, the lens and so on and right down at the bottom, if I'm on the library, let me go right down the bottom, you can see all sorts of information. So you can actually filter here. I could click on that speed rating and it will now filter my photographs to show me everything that I've got on that hard drive that uses that ISO. So I might be looking for something and thinking, I took it with that camera, I used a particular lens and you could use that. So that's a little bit of a quick overview of how Lightroom works. And I would strongly recommend if you're into photography to use this. It does face detection as well. You can see that there's a face detection option here. It's called people. It will go through and it will find people in there and you can tell them who it is. And then it makes searching for those people really easy as well. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of what 
Lightroom will actually do for you.